My, uh, my, um, back to things. I'm going on to, um, St. Louis. You know, my Kenneth or my, you know, my blue and white towel and my, you know, aunt towel I usually in the back of the chair. Well, they're on their way to, they may have gone already. Maybe they go meet them tomorrow morning to St. Louis by train. Well, I packed it in the bag already and sent it on. So, because I'm going to say, look, come on. Look, some stuff has happened. I just finished doing an uh, audio drama. It wasn't live on the air because of the station doing what the station WBAI does, but you won't get into that. But we, we recorded it because, you know, some people wrote it. Well, we wrote it, you know. We meaning, uh, let me see, it was John Kane, the American Indian, wrote it. Uh, Chris Brandt, uh, a theater buddy of mine, he runs a... Uh, the medicine show, well, he used to run the medicine show thing, but he's associated with the medicine show theater company. Uh, David D. Wright, uh, my theater partner at the Risha Tales Repertory Radio Theater Company. And, uh, oh, and me, <laughs> wrote the script. Um, Reparations for the Autochtony. That was the name of the piece. You might see it one of these days, who knows, because we recorded it. You know, it's taped, and then uh, Babatunde and, and David is going to put it together because I'm not. I did what I had to do. But in doing this stuff and all the stuff that's happened in the past few weeks that I've been and, and, and that, that I've been here, here, um, that I've come across some some things I have to just uh, I don't want to say get off my chest, but just articulate. Let's put it that way. Some prune juice to help me articulate to, to flush things out. <laughs> pure organic proof. Organic pure prune juice. I guess it's true. As you may man that know, this channel is dedicated to me. It's, it's like a living, it's like a talking living mem memoir channel. And then it sort of morphed at the beginning of the year, morphed a little bit, you know, I still do some, well, I said, done in a while, uh, some Eidos comments because it sort of tracks my journey through Eidos, you see, from February, my journey through Eidos, in fact, my understanding, you know, the, the missteps, the whatever have you. It's like, it's a pure thing. It's not, it's not polished up and say, hey, it's my finished product. Hey, there we are. Though some folks, you know, some Eidos chapters, I'm sure that they're working on, they got their codes and they, they got to do things right. And, and, you know, we all follow, um, we follow Yvette and, and, and Tone as far as their, their guidance. You know, I, I call it their uh, marching orders. But, you know, some of us have our own bright ideas. Like when I did a reparations for the attack, and reparations, not, not ADOs, but reparations for the attack. And, uh, and that really was really about, let me tell you how that came about. And about two years ago, maybe three Two, two or three years ago, I wrote this. Um, I, I do audio dramas, and very rarely, well, I shouldn't say, sometimes I write, sometimes I don't. But I wrote this, I got inspired, and I wrote this audio drama about um, Robert Mugabe, just before he passed, before he was deposed, even. Um, he goes up to Queen Elizabeth and uh, and talks to her, and, and actually, I did it. I did it as one of these things. It's, it's listed someplace. We, we did it live, you know, at, at, at my place in, in South Africa. But it's really about Robert Mugabe going in and telling Queen Elizabeth, hey, Queen, you know, the, those diamonds that you got and those jewels that you got and the, the artifacts that you all got and took whatever, and we just loaned it to you. You know what I mean? You still owe us for that. And, you know, you can hold on to it. You know, you can keep it because you got a really good security system. But, you know, we're, rent we're renting it to you. You know, you can lease it out. You know, you can go around the world with it. You know, you, you can show it here and there. You know, or maybe we might take one gem just to show it in our little museum here in, you know, whatever little uh, country we have here in Africa. But, you know, most, more than likely, we'll let you do the whole thing because, you know, we get money from that. So that was a sort of like our reparations. Instead of taking it back. And, and put it in some unsecure place or have somebody come and invade our company and take it away, country and take it away from us. Well, you know. So that, that was the theme of the piece, right? <clears throat> then when I got here, I was talking to John Kane, American Indian, and he was telling me about, and I asked him, of course, I said, you know, how come the American Indians just sort of, you know, so it seemed like they rolled over and blah, blah, blah. Then he explained to me, he said, there was a time you know, a whole time, like a hundred years or more, that, that the American Indians had peace, that the tribes made peace with each other. This is way before Columbus, whatever have you. They made peace with each other, so there was no war. So they sort of lost, not, not that they lost how to fight, but they lost their ability to war. Let's put it that way. So when the invaders came, they they lost that muscle, that war muscle. That, not that they wasn't fighting back, but they did the, the coordinated the whole thing. Da, 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 da. So he explained that to me. So that's kind of interesting. At the same time, I knew a story that David 
had told me, which is Shango's great grandfather, uh, and it's a particular uh, uh, um, uh, region of of, of uh, Africa called Oya, uh, 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 Oyo, the Oyo region, had some stuff was happening, and he cursed the people and cursed basically people into slavery. You know, so those so those so those sort of three stories came together. And said, hmm. So then I had Chris Brandt. Who's a, who, who's, a, who's a poet, and also he's interested in, you know, he's like a lefty, you know what I mean? But he, he's like, he knows about the CIA and, you know, the, you know those, those kind of things. So I had him write these connected pieces, so we put all this stuff together. But, but this is what I do. You know, I'm an audio dramatist, but I try to do things that, well, you know, that makes sense. You know, that, that makes sense, that matter. And so all this stuff, um, though, though it's not strictly ADOS, you know what I mean? It's about reparations and my whole thing, because at, at heart, I'm an evolutionary that uses, at times, revolutionary things to get things done. So this is like a revolutionary play for me, but I'm, I'm saying it that way. Okay, so here's what happens. Here's my idea. Let me try my ADOS so people will, so folks will really understand. Because people are getting all bent out of shape, you know, I talk to people, whatever. Yeah, we're my Pan-African brothers, they're not going to... You know, and sisters, they're not going to blah, blah, blah. Everybody's on their square. You know, like I say, you know, black people don't want to be wrong or wronged. You know what I mean? So so let me try to make it clear of my sort of weird position, though I made it clear before and we make it more clear once again. Here we go. It's very simple. I'm a hotep brother. I'm a pan-Africanist. This is my body. See, make, make like I'm the spear. This is a spear. They don't knock my thing over. This is a spear, right? Like this is the spear, and in the spear, on a spear, like you see this whole spear here, you know, they have all kinds of things, you know, Pan Africanism, you know, you know, black, black this, and you know, whatever that, and religious this, you know. I saw um, who is it? Uh, Rizza on uh, Joe Rogan. He was talking about the Bhavad Gita. And some people say they don't know about that, but I know about that because I read it. You know what I mean? Because it's been, it's, I've been a lot of places like that. Now, now, now notice that the spear goes like that. So the tip of the spear right now, my head, is like ADOS as far as politics go. Not all the stuff that they do in politics go because, you know, in that and tone, they got their force. You know what I mean? There's certain things they said that, you know, I'm not even going to get into it right now. Well, my favorite, let me give you an example. My favorite question when I ask people these days, I said, oh, you see Black Panther? So yeah, I said, well, who, what, what cat do you identify with? And most of the time people say, Killmonger, and whatever. I said, you're all a bunch of idiots. <laughs> Killmonger was an idiot, you know what I mean? You know, this boy wanted to go, instead of saving himself to fight another day, he gonna, he'd rather, you know, go go and, and like his ancestors, you know, his, his pre-ADOS ancestors, you know, in the Atlantic Ocean. That don't make no sense. Plus the boy wanted to kill he wanted to kill the the the, the, the his his cousin. I'm talking about the girl cousin now, who who who, who basically makes all this makes all the technology possible. Plus, he wants to get rid of the uh, the, the plants and whatever have you. I mean, the boy is and he's trained by the CIA. Everybody said the, the white guy is the, he's the enemy. Well, if the white guy is the enemy, the white guy that trained him, you know, he's the enemy too. Yeah, yeah I don't know what you're talking about, Killmonger. Please, and T'Challa is a T'Challa is a T'Challa. What the kings know? You know what what the leaders know. But Nakia, if you say Nakia, then you're thinking, you're thinking. But I know a lot of people don't want to say that because they don't. They're gonna say, "Oh, it's a female character." Now we're talking about the character, not the that the sex of the character, the character's head. You know, what I'm saying? Because so that's the kind of person I am. I'm a spy. <laughs> no, I was gonna say that. I should say that. I'm a liberator. That that that's an evolutionary liberator that uses tactics that would whatever. So for my thing about okay, like I said, ADOS is the political head, right? But for reparations itself, the reason why I throw out numbers and for reparations has to do with I'm not trying to get reparations to get some money, whatever have you. I'm trying to get reparations to bankrupt this capitalist system that causes pain to everybody. I want to bankrupt the system. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? This is more of a revolutionary act to bankrupt the system. If they got to pay, and I, my, my figure is 23 trillion. 23 trillion. Sometimes, not 23 trillion. I'm sorry, I, I take that back. 63 trillion. 21 trillion in, in precious you know, metals like gold, silver, whatever have you. 21 trillion in crypto, crypto you know, currencies. 
in 21 trillion, trillion in fiat currency that you currently in petrol dollar, whatever you currently work on. And we can start with that 21, 21 trillion with that. And then we use that to do all kinds of things. And that's just from um, from 1776 to, to now, right? Before 1776, there's a bunch of people that, oh, it's the reparation. So now we, we say African Union. We want we, we want a, 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 a free a free visa for anybody in diaspora, right? At the same time, we go after the we, we go after the Catholic Church. All those people that between uh, sixteen, nineteen, and you know whatever, you know, or even before that 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 caused the, the, the reparation said that. Then I thought something else because this play. Remember, I, I used the American Indian. Uh, you don't know the play, but anyway, we used the American Indian and 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 uh, ADOS through my Mohawk line. My my great great. Uh, my great great grandmother's line. That's the Mohawk Indian. So there's still genocide still being committed against the American Indians. So I have that in my blood too. So guess what? That's right. I use that too. My thing is about reparations. It has little to do with your money. It has to do with killing this system. And when people talk about their own code, I don't know what they're saying. Their own code. What code are you talking about? That's just it. What are you saying? What code? Oh, the, the rules you make up? That's your code? Okay, fine. Write them out. Let me see what your code is. See if I agree with that. See if it makes any sense. Because if you're going to give me a Killmonger code <laughs> or a Chichala code, you know, I'm not going for it. I need a Nakia code. And that Nakia code, to me, is articulated by, by Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. So that's where I stand. I want everybody to know that, right? So when people come at me, or when, when I ask, you know, to say, well, you know, you, you said this, uh, we don't like what you did on the radio or something like that. I'm going like, according to my code, I was absolutely on code. What's your code? That's what you have to ask yourself. What do you want to achieve with reparations? What do you want to achieve with ATOS? What do you want to achieve <laughs> in general? That's just me waxing before I have to before I jump on this train and go to uh, uh, St. Louis because I got a bunch of things to do. There's a Unity conference, there's a well a Unity dinner I want to go to, and then the Eugene B. Redmond's uh, club and whatever have you, and all the rest of that stuff. Interview some people hopefully, and uh, just have a, a a good train ride because I like to take the train. That's that's me, T from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect from a reality. My reality as well as a reality of the A D O S.